Well, hello everyone, welcome back again to the stream and today we have another coaching session, this time for my friend Bill, who sent me an email while well, we have been speaking for a little while about Greek's concerto and uh, looks like he is preparing it and he was preparing it for some concert and he wanted my advice but sadly this concert already took place and so I am arriving a little late. Anyway, he sent me a video playing the, the cadenza and he asked me if I could, uh, you know, give him some advice, some feedback, if, he, if I can comment something on his recording and this is what we are going to do today. Anyway, let's start. Let's hear the video of Greek's concertos cadenza played by my friend Bill. Okay, very good. Uh, we will go part by part and then we will discuss things in, in the general shape, but let's, let's start part by part. Okay, so I really like what uh, Bill did here. He uh, built up this. He built up this melody the, uh, going from F down here from the first, from the very first note. This this bass F, and he built it up until this D. But dear Bill, there's no A between D and D in the last. It's D, D, you see? It's not D, A, D. Okay, this is something very stupid, but I just need to comment. Uh, the balance, the sound is very good. I liked it a lot. And I like how the first B, as we were speaking today in the morning in my stream. Um, so. C. And now B is also melody, very good. And the second B is just Pianissimo, three piece, P, P, P is written there on the last note of this second arpeggio. And he does very well, this um, C, B, and then the last B is just the culmination of this second arpeggio. It's not another B like the first one. And okay, I like this. It, um, the only advice I could give him is would be just not to hit the key when he wants to play an accent because accents should be played you know even if the even if we want the note to sound a little bit more uh, like a little bit more noticeable it's not that this needs to sound aggressive you see it's not this c b that sometimes i notice when he you see my friend bill has very strong fingers uh, he has a, a very good hand built for playing the piano. He doesn't need to uh, to attack so aggressively the keys. Just let it drop, let the the the, the, um, the arm fall naturally with its own weight on the C and then the B. And then the rest of the notes of their page, they are just played by the fingers very lightly, as he does very well. Nice. Okay, now. Okay, now we were speaking, now sorry, now Bill was playing this uh, starting from the presto that we have in the beginning at the top of the of the page you're seeing in the screen um okay i miss a little more speed and a little more evenness and uh, i think bill what you need to do is to be brave there to say i already know the positions the positions are very comfortable because it's the same position here and then here Okay, for you guys to see, so it's D, E, B, D, E, B, and then the same one octave higher, and then the same one octave higher. The positions are very, very, very easy to find, to play, and... Okay, so what you need to do is, first, I would concentrate on the evenness, and for that, ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta, with 
we would not uh, like to hear ta ta ra ta 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 something like that. It's not that noticeable. I mean, it's not. I'm just exaggerating right now, but but ta ta. Even if you play it a little bit slower, ta 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 it has to sound like a like a kind of glissando but in, in positions and for me right now it sounds a bit too many notes and a little too le, uh, too little phrase too little glissando this is what I would recommend you to practice now and now for this part We're speaking about this passage now in the um, in the top of your screens, guys. Um, okay, he does very well this crescendo, and the, yes, the um, the top note, the ta 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 ta. This is very well pronounced, and I like it. Maybe it's not what I would do, but it's perfectly. It's an option that can be perfectly doable. Okay, so the same, a little bit faster. And uh, Bill, if you want to play this mm, this passage faster, what I recommend you to do is not to practice it slowly, because you already know the notes, you already know where they are. Just be brave and try to play it a little bit faster. And if you have some troubles in the beginning, because it's very difficult to you know crank up the speed suddenly, what I would do is just play in small... Like divide the whole this whole passage that you see in the top of your screens, guys, uh, in small parts. You can take four notes. You can take the next three. You can take the next three because it's ta da da dum. Then the next three notes ta da dum, and the next three ta da dum, and then we repeat the whole four three three, uh, the whole. Same notes, and then again, and then the same. It's all the time in octaves. Uh, so it's, it's the same design, just four times in four different octaves, all, all the time going down. So what I would do, we will see it later in the piano, is to to try and play fast the first ten notes. Like a, just one thing, not ta 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 ta, not not a lot of notes, just and then the same. You move the hand one octave, one octave lower, and you start again. It's going to be four times because it's forty notes. And then when you're comfortable playing just um, this motif, just once the, the ten notes, just once, but very quick. Then you play, and you try to join two of them. So we will see it better now because with my it's not the most clear thing probably in the, in the world. But we will move to the piano and I will demonstrate how good I practice this, or how did I practice this actually? Because I, I'm learning this cadenza now that Bill gave me the curiosity. Anyway, let's continue. Let's continue. Up here, the um, I think the most important advice I would give you for this part is that it's just meno presto. It's written here. I was just zooming in. It's written meno presto. 
but not Largo, because I think it's right now it's a little bit too slow. I know it's written with uh, fermata, every long note, there's a fermata on top, but I couldn't play it so slow because it it misses the da, 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 the you know the whole line the line that has to be on top this is like a re recitativo is called in italian it's when you when the singer is declamating is uh, stating some melody they're developing the story so the point is that if you stop so much on every single note even in the notes that are written very small, like the, after the after the long half notes with the fermata, I would just move a little bit more. Like this A does a little bit like this and takes us to the sorry A and takes us to the D. E F, let's move on. F and again does like this. G A B flat does a little bit. Like this again, you and arrive to arrive to the last G sharp. We will see it in, this in the piano. It's not suddenly largo. It's not suddenly lento. This is what I want to say. It's still almost in the same, not in the same tempo as that that comes before. But we want to continue to keep going. A little bit before. Now, ti ra 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 ra. You see, it's a little bit too slow. And for example, another thing that I, I would make uh, emphasis on is the legato. Because it, after you play the, the A, for some reason, you release this finger. I wouldn't do that. I would just play legato from A to F and try to keep the phrase as legato as possible. So 5 and 4 legato instead of this. Now this D sharp needs a little bit more power because we're going to play the chord underneath it. Da, da, di, di. This one. Da, and then the chord has to be almost nothing, it's just the harmony. Da, 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 di, da. The chord cannot disrupt because if you if we hear the melody di, da, 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 pom, chord, pom, it's not what we're looking for. Tira chord, tira, and the same. The F has to be a little bit more in order not to be swallowed by the next chord. More. Yes. Let's continue. The same with the G sharp, it needs to be more. I could play a little bit of crescendo inside these little designs. We will see it later in the piano. Okay, I don't know which edition you're using, but I don't see any B down there. But I guess it's not uh, not something too bad. And now the G sharp has to be extremely loud. Look, this uh, long D sharp, uh, G sharp. Because we're uh, because a lot of things are going to happen inside this G sharp, and dun, the second voice does, da, da, da. and we need to hear how the G sharp da, da, resolves on this A. Dun, this G sharp it already disappeared. You see. So there's no connection. Anyway, let's move on. Nothing wrong with playing anything wrong in the left hand. Let's stop here. Um, 
Let's stop here because there are plenty of things to speak about. And the most important thing here is the melody. Then the build up. More. More. And so on, so on, so on. So the rest of the little notes that appear in the middle. Believe me, they're not as important as you think they are. So there's actually no need to think about this 7 against 8 in the right and then 7 again against 8. Let me show you here. You see, because the left hand is, is written in 7 and the right hand is written in in groups of 8. There's no need to focus too much on that. And in, or, in order to practice this, what you what we need to do is just to forget <laughs> that uh, there are plenty of notes in the middle. So ding, ta, 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 ta. we have to practice probably separately and with the metronome in order to pam pam first the melody tam pam pam tam ta dum pam pam just the melody with the octaves in order to get a good grasp of how this is going to sound, how is, how is it going to build up. And then we can add another layer, for example, the tremolo. While at the same time keeping the same beat on the metronome. Because then we will play accelerando, but for now uh, in the first stages of practice, we just need to make it stable to, for, for our fingers and for our brain to know where we are. Because there is no build-up without a constant beat. You know, it doesn't sound the same. So it has to all the time move forward. And for that, I would practice with the metronome. And then, for example, once we have one bar, and you, you know how to play one bar safe and sound, let's say, for example, just this. The first one. Then you have to practice the left hand also on the, under the same beat. And you just have to focus that the first note, this bass E note, and the last E note, I mean the top note of the um, the one that falls on two and the one the one that falls on four. So one things happen in the middle, two things happen in the middle, three things happen in the middle, four things happen in the middle, and one. And this is how I would practice without focusing too much on. Ta 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 or either to divide it in four or three. I wouldn't think in on the eighth note. I would think on the beat just that. And phrase it. In order for it not to be too stagnant. And then once the right hand knows what to do and the left hand knows what to do separately. You just put them together, you just feel the beat, but the very slow one, two, three, not faster, four. And then you play what you already know without focusing at all on the coincidence. In fact, we're going to totally ignore that. We're going to totally ignore if we're playing in the, um, like with coincidence, seven against eight or something, because this is impossible to play it mathematically and at the same time to play it, to, to build the tension that we want to create. No? So we're going to see all of this because what I see, for example, in Bill's um, rendition is that he's focusing too much on the notes that happen in the, mid in the middle and uh, I cannot feel the melody, I cannot feel the build up. Because it's actually good and um, the notes on the left are actually fitting the notes in the right but I hear them too much. This is what I would change. And for that I would play the little, maybe not faster in, in the beginning. We don't need to play, we don't need to play faster. 
right? We need to play deeper the melody and forget about the rest. Like let our brain completely switch off this um, this part, completely switch off of the middle and from the left hand this. There are too much, there is too much density here. I hear too many notes in the middle. I just want to hear with some some rumble in the middle, but not ta 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 or ta 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 Just a rumble, just a lot of pedal. Blend all those notes together and make the melody sound above all of them. And for example, uh, I would recommend you build to check the fingerings again because, for example, I'm not going to check all of them. This is probably something you you will be better off doing yourself because you know your hand better than I do. But for example, I don't think playing uh, A with the five and G with the three, like together like this, having this four in the meantime. Uh, in the middle, sorry, when we have um, an actual third, it's not like two notes together. So a third, I think, when whenever you have the opportunity, I will switch it for two and four. All the time that you can, when you have a third, in the meantime, not a second, but a third, use two and four. This is fine. So three and two is fine. Now another thing I want to speak about is the quality of the octaves because again it sounds a little bit to me like we were speaking in the beginning like the mm, too hard too aggressive no so and the octaves now I see them and I hear them like pa pa and I want something like round and more full of you know, you have to feel that you arrive to the bottom of the keyboard from the keyboard, not from the not from the sky falling down, just from the um, you're in the, on the ground and you're jumping away, you're jumping away, not falling, but all the opposite. You're jumping, you're pushing the ground uh, below your feet in order to jump fast. That, sorry, to jump high. Pam, pam, not pam. Even if there are notes in the middle, this is even more comfortable because you can stay here. Pam, 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 pam. So a little bit of support from the arm, make your horn, your whole arm jump from your fingers like tium, tium. This is what you need to to look for. This will al this will also help you a lot in the final octaves anyway. You see, oh my God, <laughs> pam. You really wanted to kill the two notes, Bam! those two notes. Yes, you have. To, you can play very loud. In fact, uh, this jumping motion, if you get used to it, if you push yourself away from the piano, is going to create actually a louder sound than what you are producing. But it's going to be rich. It's going to be full. It's not going to be aggressive. We will see it later in the piano. And this needs to be a little faster. And the octaves then. It has to build up. It's not pam pam pim pam 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 a hammer playing the same th I mean hitting the same thing over and over. You can start a little bit less in order to grow a little bit uh, a little bit more. And now the octaves. What surprises me is what is that you're playing this G sharp uh, extremely loud with a lot of passion. Wait, th this one, this one. Yes, 
I like the passion. But now, for example, when you play the octaves, you play diminuendo and it loses tension. You have to bring it out. You have to... This is the moment in which the piano has to shine, when the piano has to rumble, when it has to throw the columns of the auditorium away. You have to destroy the building with your sound. Okay, and now um, I would make something different here because the A is um, it's not part of the passage. The A... Okay, ah, I forgot to turn the page. Anyway. Come here. Ah, we, we were speaking about this. This is where I would start a little bit less. Because then you have the octaves uh, here. They start here. And this is where I would just, you know, play as loud as humanly possible. But now, this passage ends on the B flat, not on the A. Because the A is the appoggiatura to the A minor chord that falls on the fortissimo. So it's not pan, rest, and now. Pam pam ba bam no it's da 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 until the B flat and then ba bam so that between the A and the chord it has to be as solid as possible it it, it cannot be you know three seconds of pause between the the appoggiatura here and the chord um, because what I see is that you're arriving to the A. Now you wait until your fingers are positioned. Yeah, with a good practice, it would be just to pop on to arrive as early as possible to this A minor. And the same, the same things, the same thing happens later. Rumble. You see, there's a lot of pause between the rumble and the chord. Pam, there are even two seconds. Pam, 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 pam. It's it's a lot. Ti da 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 da. Pam, pam. You can play if you want a little bit of ritardando, if it's more comfortable for you in the last four notes of the um, of the rumble. These four notes, for example. Yeah. Ti da 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 da. Pam, pam. But the A. So these last four notes. But this A needs to be very quick to bring us to the next chord. Pa -pam, pa -pam, pa -pam, pa -pam. Then we have the next rumble and the same things happen. Before this uh, C major chord, which is a little bit later. Let's see. Now this is the previous rumble and we're going to C major. The three Fs. You see, there's a lot of pause between the C and the chord. Apart from the fact that this poor C <laughs> seems like it's broken already. You have to play a little bit. And I mean, I like your passion, but um, passion could never become aggression. And uh, this, C, this C octave and single note seems a, sounds a little bit aggressive. And that's why I would recommend you to jump away and not to fall. difficult part. Okay, this um, little note be before the F team -da -da -dum, is arpeggiated, don't forget that, because otherwise it would be too aggressive. This one. You see, it sounds like pam pam, but it's arpeggiated. It sounds too blocky, too 
brick, brick, brick instead of the whole melody. And I think about this part we better speak about uh, on the piano because it's easier and um, because there are many things to see uh, to say here but it's better to you know to demonstrate them at the same time so let's continue Okay, now this is the part of the, of the arpeggio that when I heard it the first time I saw something very interesting. Let me stop right here and come back because this is written in a particular way. We have the G sharp here. Let me just zoom out a little bit. Yes. So on the top of the, of the page we have the long G sharp that needs to be extremely powerful because of all the things that are going to sound later. This arpeggio going up. Then A, another arpeggio that you can see in the next bar, and then the same thing piano. So let's see what our friend Bill does here, which is very interesting. Sorry. He plays again the G sharp. I know what it, what this was this the intention of playing again this G sharp, and it's some very good idea with a bit of a suboptimal execution we will speak about that i think what he want, what he was trying to do is to press them again without making them sound in order to release the pedal and still feel this g sharp i couldn't do that i like more to continue the build up but it's a perfectly doable thing that many people actually do Let's continue. He does the same with the A. So this is what he wanted to do. This is the, the good execution. So for example, now he plays the A. And now. Again, if the A was a little bit less aggressive and more played with the arm and with the weight and with the jumping motion, it would, it would um, sound deeper and it would probably stay longer in your ear. This A. Because it's ah, too much of this. Did you hear that? I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that because for me it loses power. When we have huge um, arpeggios with a lot of harmony and a lot of density and I really like to keep that. But, I mean, it's good, it's just I wouldn't, for it to sound great, I wouldn't wait too much. Because it, it loses tension. And already, team. Same here. You can do this fancy thing, and but continue already. Because otherwise, there's... Ah, this is pianissimo, my friend. This is pianissimo una corda. Una corda means even with the left pedal. This cannot... This should sound like an echo of what comes before. So the G sharp and the A, they are like... Dum, bum, huge bells. But then the C... Bum, and then the B... Bum, so... Dum, bum, This is what we are looking for. Remember that those two are pianissimo. Pianissimo well, while at the same time the C and the B, the long notes, the half note, the sorry, the whole notes that appear in the beginning of the bar, the one that you right now have at the top of your page, they still need to be a little bit deeper in order for them to sound uh, very long. This is also pianissimo. <laughs> Okay, this is a very tricky passage, we will speak about that. And now, about this trill. For satos that, that appear here, the trills, they are just for the first note. It's not ti ta 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 It's not for sato for every note, it's just 
And that's it, not more. And they are quarter notes. They are not like uh, long uh, whole notes with fermatas. They are quarter notes. So one, two, four, three, four. And we are already on the next bar. We will see this because if you stay so long on the trios, they're going to also lose tension. We're going to play the B now. We're here. Now this is a tricky passage. And now the trills. And the trills in general have to be faster. If you... Um, if you play the trees moving the fingers so much up and down, like you do, it can never be fast. So what I would do is just to stay there. I mean, the trees are played like this. From here already, like moving the fingers with a lot of energy, but already from the from the keyboard, not from up and away. away. And in fact, in order to make it um, more powerful, because with two and three, those are very agile fingers, they move very fast, they are our best fingers to play fast, but they are not very powerful for the same reason. You cannot be fast and powerful at the same time. So with, what is the most powerful fingers the, that we have here? So I would recommend you to play these trees with one and three. With one and three. It's going to be great. Relax here. So one and three for the win, always. One and three. When, when you can, those fingers are much better to play trees than two and three. Unless you really need them to be fast and to be shiny and all of that. But in this case, I mean, one, one and three can also play fast and shiny. That's why I, will, I always recommend. Now, if your hand is not big enough, you can make the trick here to play this D, because this is a tenth. You can play this D with the thumb of the right hand if you, if you cannot reach a tenth on the left. And uh, let's just see the, the end of this. Okay, and now the, um, this last tremolo is different. You play two and two notes, so you're playing D, F, uh, sorry, F, F sharp, F and G sharp with these two fingers, and B and C, and you're playing two, 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 two. But it's three, one, three, one, three, one, three, one, three, one, three, one, three. That's why I recommend to play the one, two, three, and then five, to avoid using this finger for a trill. This works much better. We will see it in the piano. And this has to be measured, actually. Otherwise, he would have just written a, a tremolo with a lot of, you know, horizontal bars. But he wrote especially, he wrote specifically, specifically this um, two, two, four, and now the tremolo that comes here, right after that. So, and then the left hand plays within that. One, two, four, three, four, tremolo. And this has to be in tempo. This is the only way for it to sound um, as a line. Then here you can take all the time you want in the tremolo. When you're with the hands like this already. Okay, so now let's move on to the piano and let's demonstrate all that we were speaking about today. Okay guys, I'm back, so let's start. Let's start from the very beginning of the... Um... You see, my hands are totally relaxed when I'm playing this. Not like this that I was seeing just a little bit on your on your video. Yeah. And the last one is almost nothing. Mm. 
So this B and this other B, they're two different natures. And now. And I was seeing that I w you were focusing too much on every note, but just let it flow. You already know where the positions are. So this is one and so on. Just play it, play it, uh, concentrate to play it even first. Not something like that. I was, of course, exaggerating, but. If you play without the pedal, you need to hear ta 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 So the crescendo comes within the repetitions of the... And then less... And when you start this, it's already piano. And okay, uh, what I was telling you in, or in order for you to see how to practice this. So we have this, and then we have this, which is the same, and then we have this, which is the same, and then... Which is the same, so... If you have trouble with this, you can play this very fast. And then this very fast, and then this very fast. And practice like this. And then join two, for example, the first and the second. And then the second and the third. Probably it's not going to be you know, perfect the first time as I'm doing, no? because I'm, oh, I, I also, I also practiced this already. So, so first, the, the first and the second. And then the second and the third. You can start slowly. And more, and more, and more, and more. And then you can join the three together. The first slowly. Then a little bit more, then a little bit more, faster, faster, very good. So we have already one. And then we do the same down here. The last one doesn't have to be that fast because it will give us, it will bring, bring us here, but This is how you practice this in small parts, in and then you bring them all together. It's not, it's not that hard. It will just take you probably one hour or no, not even half an hour of dedicated practice, and you're going to play it. It should work. And now this A to sound a lot. This D sharp the same, because we cannot play this as if it was the melody. It has to still be there. This F the same. This G sharp the same in order not to be the B flat the same and the G sharp this has to be the deepest one because many things are going to happen here in the middle and we still need to hear this G sharp connected with the A. Did you hear that? That was 
so good, no? Okay, so in general, a little bit faster. Just play the melody. And a little bit more. I know it's piano, but this is just for you to to hear the melody. to practice before. Then you can add okay, you put the metronome, slow tempo. This is the part in which I would cha I would change your fingerings. Instead of this, without the fourth finger doing nothing. This repeats much better than this. Here, for example, in this in the C sharp, this is the one that I told you it's impossible to play with four, no? But you can change to three and then change back to four. Three and four. And again. And that's it. That's the bass for the um, for the left for the right hand, sorry. Now let's see the left. So now we are going to play in groups of seven, but we're not going to count one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, or one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. No, because it doesn't make sense. This is so fast and so blurry and so full of density that we're not going to focus on that. So one, two, and you focus on this E, and you focus on this E. One, two, one, two, one, two. And you do the same with every bar. as stable as you can. If you can play it under a metronome the first couple of times or three better. So one, two, one, two, one, two. And now when you feel comfortable with the left hand, maybe you don't have to play the whole of it, but you can play for example bar by bar. No? And you take the first bar and you do. And then you practice just with the left hand and hear the melody. Same with the next bar. First, you practice the left hand. One, two. Forget about what is in the middle. Two. One, two, three, four. So. And 
And then when you're ready, you can just... For this, you maybe need to play the right hand along uh, one, or one time or two again, but... One, two, three, four. comfortable with this and with this separately just play both you focus on the beats so one two and which notes are fall uh, are falling under under the beat and then you forget about the rest you ignore the rest whatever happens in the middle is not important you can practice even beat by beat if this still gives you trouble so one two that have to fall together, fall together and then this one and then you do the same in the next bar so first one beat first and the second for example it was not perfect so let's repeat it now it's good so you just repeat it You do the same in basically in every bar until and about the octave now instead of especially this G sharp that you were playing before, it's extremely aggressive. You're here, so just let it like jump away from the key. But uh, it's like you have your feet on the ground. You have your feet on the ground and you jump. Oi. <laughs> Sorry, my piano. You jump away. You jump away. This is what your hand is doing. So this is the floor, and you're jumping away. You're not hitting the floor. You're falling, falling from a plane. You're jumping to a plane. And now, when you want to develop this, you might want to start this pianissimo. But when you start pianissimo, this has to sound a little bit like mezzo piano, because if you if if, if you play pianissimo. No one is going to understand it, so... A little bit. A little bit more than this. And then you can start a little bit slower. you can do is to fresh the left hand for example when you when you're playing melody I was speaking about this today in the morning in the stream so when we play this we just want to focus on this but now we have a long note and until the next one comes there's a lot of time so what we can do in the meantime is mm, to bring out the left hand a little bit so not here, because also because this E kind of clashes against the F, so... But now that this already happened, and we're playing a long note, we can bring the left a little bit. Not 
the first time uh, of every bar though, because uh, uh, because it would it will cover the melody, and we don't want that. We just want to fill the gaps in the melody. It, and you know, now I'm exaggerating it, but it's going to be much more stable. So. Everything is quite dark here. We are still dark. But now, with this chord, something opens up because it's, it's a dominant that we're not expecting. It's like a little bit of light, especially with this C sharp song. This is the moment in which we can start to... We can start to grow, we can start to develop the tension, but not before. If we can wait, if we can delay the pleasure of uh, playing the crescendo, the crescendo, before the... Um, this chord is going to be great, so here I'm, I'm going to keep a little bit quiet. Even my pedal is, is not going to be fully pressed, I'm just half pressed or something like that and uh, cleaning a little bit because I don't want to create a huge ball of sound from the beginning. If our fingers know their place and know where to go, and they are able to play it clean. We don't need that much pedal. We can play almost without pedal. Of course, I mean, I'm exaggerating. I'm never going to play like this, no? Especially in a big auditorium with an orchestra behind, but... The point is that we don't need so much pedal here. Still not, still not. I need to restrain myself a little bit because I'm tempted to start growing already here. But still not. If we are growing, if we're playing crescendo, and if we're playing also accelerando, we cannot um, uh, sorry. wait and wait and then play this slow because uh, we need to continue developing. So. Um, to play the octaves going down again um, this is actually very easy because it's four chromatic notes and four chromatic notes so from F to B to F to B from and I'm going to play them to play them within the same pedal not I'm never going to do something like that. And um, yeah, today in the morning I, I was speaking, uh, speaking a little bit about the pedal. I'm going to upload a video about the pedal in this yeah, in this whole part from then. I'm going to upload it to YouTube probably today. And um, yes. Today means that tomorrow is the day in which I'm going to upload this lesson. So uh, when you're here, when, when you're listening to this, I will have uploaded the video about the pedal yesterday. Um, okay, we're here now. <laughs> <laughs> 
I really love to cut a little bit before this because uh, we were saying that it doesn't finish here and then we play a new thing because uh, we finish here actually and now another thing comes so what I'm going to do because I, I discovered it the other day and it turns out I love it is uh, Pedal, 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 cut. Cool, eh? I like it a lot. So, and this has to be very fast. Not three seconds. Let me put my fingers and all this. So this has to be practiced. This has to be in tempo. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. This is what we want to play. Not um not like separate things, but... Which means, in, uh, we need to play this much faster than that my friend Bill was playing. And we don't want to hear... We don't really want to hear that, because it doesn't bring anything new to the table, so... We're going to start piano, because we are going to play this fortissimo. It's just a rumble that appears out, out of nowhere. We're going to play crescendo very quick. And it's going to culminate on the A. If you want to you can play a little bit of retardando in the last few notes, as I, as I was telling you. In order to have time to prepare this one. And this is not the end. And this is another beginning. This is. Again, the same. Start slowly, uh, sorry, start piano and fast. Ah, too, too much time. I'm already looking here at this uh, moment, I'm, I'm, I'm at this chord I'm going to play afterwards. I'm not, I'm not going to stay with my eyes. then move my eyes and then move my hands because this is too slow so I'm already looking here I'm always looking to the chord before the chord arrives This is the most difficult part that we, that we were speaking before. Okay, the most important thing is... That the melody sounds. Which means the inner notes needs to, need to be extremely fast. And for this we need to play with the perfect uh, distribution for our hands. There are people who play like something like that, a martellato with both hands. I don't like it at all because it gives more importance to those notes than what they actually have. So um, In fact, I play when I have the opportunity, I play everything with my right because I trust it. I trust it that it knows where to go. I practiced, I have practiced in my life a lot of. Mm, a lot of chords with four notes, so. I'm pretty, I'm pretty confident that, confident that my. 
that my um, right hand will know where to go. That's why I will not do like swim, no? I'm not going to do that. When uh, sometimes I have no other option, no? Because this one would uh, force me to bring the hand here and I don't want that. Ah, Bill, uh, I found a solution for you, look. Left, right, and now. The left hand plays the D. And then we play. And then... Uh, that. That way, it's very comfortable because we don't have to play any tenth, either with the, with the right or with the left. This is very uncomfortable, so... And also... We already have our left hand here. And I played this... Um, the last two with the left... With the right, sorry. Because that way... I will not lose any time. With so many jumps, so... much more agile I mean, and I want to always drive forward this part so okay I need to play cleaner but yeah this is the one I play with this one hand this is the same left uh, sorry left right G with the left and then right Arpeggio is not yes. Now in this one I am forced to play with the left here because this one is very uncomfortable to bring the right hand here. So what I do is just the the position that I'm playing here on B flat I just play with the left and the other two there with the right and the, in the last one for example what I do is to play B flat E G and the B flat with the left that way that way I will not lose any time because if I play the B flat with with the two it is already here and while I play this B flat my right hand has time to jump Do, do I not play? Well, it's obvious because it would take me... I would lose so much time in the air. So... Left, right, and right. Left, right, right. Now, this is the part in which you do this. same but with anyway if you play a note for all of you who don't know and you play more things in the middle uh, whatever and you press it again very faintly without making it sound and you change the pedal the note is, is, the note is still there Here comes my question. If you play the G sharp deep and strong and you know powerful enough, it will still sound and it will sound with the resonance of the of the harmony without the need of just bringing it out for any reason. So I'm going to play it. You hear it, right? It's here, and this is never disturbing the G-sharp. The same with the A, powerful A. 
and you can still hear right and now still there we don't need to do that so those two are fortissimo because it's the culmination of too much because it's um, the same melody so arpeggios so it's the same I'm not going to play that. I know I'm not going to play it later because it's a, a contrast. So I'm going to play it just deep, but not forte, and uh, not forte, and also not pianissimo. And the rest is going to be nothing. It doesn't matter if any note doesn't sound in the middle. Just let your hands loose and... And now for this part The first thing you need to make sure is that That you are actually play the, playing the notes in pairs And this demands a little bit of slow practice And maybe practice in this way notice that at some point you're doing like this, just come back to it. Then when you're ready you can move on. For example this one, this first one was not totally good so concentrate. Now you can connect the two. So yeah the most important is that they are both every pair of notes is played is played at the same time. Oh my God, how difficult it is to play slow. Anyway, uh, let's continue. So, and don't wait. to try to play everything in tempo so one two in the same or one and sorry one two three four so our tempo for the cadenza is one two three four and then we continue one two three four one two three four one. You can delay the two a little bit because we have to change to this. I recommend you to play with. Okay, you play this with the left, which is great. But you can also play the F double sharp in the G, also with the left. One, two, and three, and four, and one, three, four, one, two, three, three, four, one. So one, two, three, four, one. Here you can play as um, fast as you as you want. Three, four, one, two, three, four, and then you just prepare the entrance for the orchestra. And you 
gently nod to the conductor that this is where the orchestra will enter. 